Now, if we look at the evolution of the agricultural system, the viewpoint of the World Bank and the IMF and FAO and others is that there's a natural sequence of progress in agriculture. First of all, there is the transition from labor intensive to capital intensive. We can reduce the number of workers on a farm. Nowadays, a family farm in Iowa uh, may be worked by the family plus one or two part-time hired hands. You no longer have the large bunk houses with a, a labor force that you fed every day. So that's the first transition from labor intensive to capital. Secondly, from heterogeneous to homogeneous. The heterogeneity was partly a result of land tenure. You had a patchwork of ownership. And partly the fact that people were growing things for their own use to be, and, and to be compatible with their annual cycle. Because you can't have a crop that demands full time labor during the harvest, and you have nothing to do the rest of the time. So uh, there, uh, there was a certain amount of diversity in peasant agriculture. So it was a transition, modernization meant going from heterogeneity to homogeneity. Third, it went going from small scale to large scale. And even though we have a sentimental attachment to the family farm, and even though the family farms are in fact more productive on a world scale, per, per unit area than the industrial farms. Nevertheless, they're going bankrupt. Farmers are being pushed off the land. Uh, they're being outsold. Uh, their water is being removed by the deep drilling for water by the industrial agriculture. In Palestine, deep digging deep wells becomes a, a form of ecological warfare against the Palestinians reaching the water at a depth that the Palestinians can reach. And since water is in short supply in the region, that's one of the ways in which the Israeli government is destroying Arab agriculture. Another way is simply bulldozing the olive trees. Olive trees are a very ancient crop, and they were the substitute for field crops when the forests of the ancient Middle East were chopped down to build ships for the Athenian Navy. So you have a transition then uh, from uh, labor intensive to capital intensive, from heterogeneity to homogeneity, from small scale to large scale, from uh, obeying nature to clobbering nature, overwhelming nature. And then it doesn't matter if the soil is lousy, you don't get fertilized. It doesn't matter if it's too dry for your crop, you pump water. In a sense, it's replacing natural processes by surrogates that resemble them in some ways, but not in enough ways. And they saw it as the replacement of superstition by scientific knowledge. And, uh, of dependence on nature to domination over nature. Within the knowledge system, there was a belief that the smaller the object of study, the more scientific it was. And therefore, molecular and, and genetic approaches were to be considered more sophisticated than feeling the soil in your fingers for deciding what to do or counting bugs. So this is some of the transitions that are regarded as modernization. Traditional knowledge regarded as superstition. Now, uh, the FAO, the World Bank, IMF, and so on, see that as the core of development. They would like to invest in agriculture in that kind of modernization. Now it's possible to uh, raise an alternative notion. The alternative notion is that modernization development is a branching process. 
Along the way, there are choices of what direction to go in. It's not fated that you have these transitions from labor intensive to capital intensive and so on. That's a question which developed out of the social and economic relations that guided the transition with the development of capitalism in agriculture. So what, are, what kinds of alternatives? An alternative strategy says from uh, labor intensive to capital intensive to knowledge intensive is to recognizing the ecological complexity of agricultural production and using that in a way where you can simply nudge nature a bit instead of overwhelming it. So this means then uh, that it's possible to have a knowledge intensive strategy. And I'll mention some of the elements of that. One is from, heterog from heterogeneity to homogeneity to planned heterogeneity. And the strategy that we're advocating for agriculture is a mosaic. Land use should be a mosaic of different land uses, rather than the growing of crops where they're most popular. The logic of this is probably the following. A hurricane can have a diameter of something like 200 miles. So if all of your rice is grown in the best rice growing area, which is concentrated within a radius of 200 miles, then a hurricane can wipe out your food supply. So having your rice grown, even in those places where the yields are not great, are your hedge against disaster. You're also a hedge against plagues, which will spread right through a rice growing area if that's all that's grown. So on this, on a geographic scale, the mosaic is your protection against accident. On a regional scale, a mosaic is a way of assuring that the demand for labor is more or less uniformly spread throughout the year. The demand for water is compatible with the availability of water. The production is of enough diversity so that a lot of it can provide the food needs of a region. 